so let me explain again uh, what happened uh, with Flipski stuff. So if you want to buy Flipski, I mean, their product's fine, but people are missing the point. Like there, there are people that are like, oh, Flipski sucks, like sucks. But I don't want to think that way. I want to be scientific. Um, and that's why, you know, when I used to first start making Flipski, uh, you know, skateboards with Flipski, I've had almost zero problems. But I was only using 10S, I was using 36 volts. Four, I started with a VESC a 4.20 uh, plus, and then I, you know, that was working just fine. Uh, and then I moved to uh, the 6.6, not the plus, just the regular version. It's huge, right? It's huge. And that worked really great. And then I've used uh, 6.6 plus, and they were great at 10S. And then I started building 12S batteries. And that's now, now I know that 12S is simply just too much voltage uh, for the design, the schematics of the plus ones. Not, not the actual, the, not the actual VESC, but what's wrong with is the anti spark switch. So basically, um, you know, if you go to, I, I went through the forums, try to investigate what happened. Uh, but the anti-spark switch basically does not support 12S voltage, right? Especially when you do FOC motor detection wizard. Because what FOC motor detection wizard is basically sends a really, um, you know, it actually sends a really high pulse, I think. But from, from my experience, it sends a real high pulse uh, high voltage as high as it can to see how what's the maximum the vest can handle first and also uh, how much the motor can handle now if the vest like if i use 4.20 plus and do a foc wizard on my 6374s that are rated for 80 amps i will only be able to detect it'll say oh you can only do 50 amps because it actually detects how much the vest uh, can support so in other words, uh, the VEST software actually doesn't have any safety features. Um, I guess you can run like small runner, but but usually you're supposed to do medium uh, outrunner. Um, so I think there's issues with VESC also because VESC is just not very well documented. Um, especially when it comes to dual VESC, it doesn't tell you, okay, is it motor amps? Is it half the motor amps <laughs> if you have dual vests? Or is it, you know, or is the battery amps uh, per motor or is it for all? Because battery battery current, it doesn't matter if you have two motors, three motors, it's always going to stay the same. Yet, the way VESC works is that it's, it's divided in half. And that confuses the hell out of engineers like myself. Who know volts and current and that does not make sense to an engineer to have that halved okay battery can be the same it shouldn't matter because battery current is going to be the same whether you have two motors or three motors of course each motor can have different amps um so stuff like this is something i think um i mean i love vesk but stuff like this is missing and um I think I'm going to make a lot of tutorials teaching people how to these little things that they should know. And if they don't know, they end up burning their motor, burning their battery. So there's problems with VESC software. But, I mean, all open source is like that, though. There's going to be <laughs> some instruction missing. That's why it's open source. That's why it's, you know, it's great. <laughs> but that process of finding that is also sort of happiness and, and, and it's it's sort of... You know, it's it, that's what open source is. So I can't blame them because it's open source. Uh, if it was actually a paid software, then we would pay a ton more. We would pay like a hundred bucks just for the software, you know, for example, or fifty bucks. And then I would really expect it. But I'm not gonna blame it on Vesk. But I'm saying that's part of the Vesk software problem that Flipskis are blowing up because the Vesk sends out <laughs> a current until it finds the maximum. And in cases like a Flipski Vest uh, Plus with the anti-spark uh, anti uh, switch, it's also not, it's sort of not completely faulty, but it's it's not complete, 
be fault fail proof. So in cases where I use 12S batteries like myself and use it on larger motors, I've never had it with like 6355 or 6354 motors. It seems like the combination of large voltage, um, high voltage and large motors causes these problems. Um, yeah, so I just want to clear that. So if you guys want, I wouldn't just wouldn't use the plus. Another thing I told you, the pluses have, they're tiny. The design's supposed to be tiny. But the problem is the heat sink becomes small. Like the 6.6 .6 regular, the heat sink is like twice bigger. And it never heats up. It never heats up on any of my powerful Icebox skateboard. Um, you know, my off-road skateboard. But as soon as I put on the 6.6 .6 Plus, 4.20 Plus on the same board, it starts heating up on these steep hills. And if you don't live on these steep hills like myself, you will not know. But I do. I have to build it so it it, it stands up to these steep, steep hills. It's, it's like a test for me. Like, if it don't stand up, I can't ride it here. You know, it's got to stand up to the San Francisco hills. All my boards can go, you know... All day until the battery runs out without heating up on the San Francisco type of hills. I daily, well, I live daily city. It's right next to San Francisco, so we have pretty much exact same hills or even worse. So, um, if you really want to test out your skateboard, test it on steep hills. Like try going up like a mountain or something. If you can make it up, then you got a really solid, solid engineering, solid design. Um, but if you just test it on flat ground. That's not testing. That's not tell you anything. Or put put some weight on it. Put put uh, like three hundred pound, you know, dumbbells or something. Or maybe like two hundred pound. Maybe three hundred too much. Maybe a hundred pound dumbbells on your skateboard, and test out the load. But the best way is a steep hill because steep hills. Oh, just it is just a challenge. And I, I didn't know electric skateboards. I could make it go up fast to these hills. But even people, when I ride my Icebox electric skateboard, like, what the fuck? How does that go up the hill so fast? It's so fucking cooler. <laughs> I just, I'm fucking proud of myself. Um, and yeah, I just want to tell you about the, the flip ski issue. Um, so the best thing to do is just avoid the plus versions. If you want to go, if you're going to go small, I 4.20 plus is okay. But it still has heating issues for steep hills. Um, but one way I solved it is by exposing the heat, heat sink. So cut out the bottom of your um, battery box. And now just epoxy everything on there on the bottom of it. So it's waterproof. But it's the bottom. The heat sink is exposed. Then you can pretty much make it fail proof up those hills. But problem with the plus design is they try to make it so small... Uh, yet their heat sink became so small and it's not cooling anymore. So the six, the original 6.6 .6 is a really good design. Um, it's large, but it's got a huge heat sink. And that's why I don't even have to worry about exposing it. I could just put it in the box and just run it. It is a solid machine. That Flipski 6.6 .6 is absolutely the most awesome, uh, budget friendly vest not the most awesome but very cheap 200 bucks for a vest that can do 100 amps per side a continuous and up to 400 amps burst for total or is it 800 per side 400 amps and 800 amps total um so i mean just just i i've, I've used every fucking flip ski products <laughs> yeah see and if you wanna if you still wanna you know if if you don't want to use a, I mean, you, you shouldn't not use the plus versions. Um, if you want another better option, I don't know. I don't like the single ones because they don't have any kind of heat sink. Those I actually haven't tested out. So that's, I have a few of them, so I might test those out. I think they might be okay. I don't know, but they have no heat sink. So I, I don't know if how they will do. I don't, I, well, I did test them out. They, they weren't actually that good. Uh, I'll have to test them out more and more thoroughly, but for right now, um, if you're going with any anything large motors, if you're going above 50 amps, definitely Flipski 6.6. .6. Obviously, if if you're less than 50 amps or less, you're not going to be able to even <clears throat> utilize the power of the 6.6. .6. 
but I would still get it, you know, because it's, it's got a huge, huge, uh, it, it would just run super, super cool. Um, yeah, 50 amps, I, I'll just go get the 4.12 hardware models, cheaper ones, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Six more rants. Hey.